Today we're going to talk about first class levers. Levers are um, a simple machine that are designed to make work easier. So anytime that you have a lever, if it gives you an advantage, it makes work easier. So I'm going to model today how to build a first class lever. We're going to talk about all the lever parts of the lever and we're going to practice reading a spring scale. So this isn't part of the lever, but it's what we use to build our lever off of our desks. It's just a dowel rod. We attach it to the edge of our desk. Um, you want it hanging off the edge about an inch or so. And then you use pieces of duct tape just to hold it down, hold it in place. So two pieces of duct tape, one at the front, one towards the back. Okay. Then we have what we call our lever arm. For our purposes, it's just a ruler. It's marked um, from zero out to two and a half centimeters, five centimeters, ten centimeters, and so on increments out. When you build a first class lever, the fulcrum goes in the middle. Um, and our purpose, our fulcrum is going to be a binder clip. You have to be careful about how you put it on because you want the numbers on the ruler to be legible, reading correctly, not upside down. So when you put it on, you put it on from the bottom, you flip up the two little silver parts, and then it attaches onto the wooden dowel rod. One of the most common errors that fifth graders make is either putting it on upside down so that the numbers read upside down, and then you can't read the numbers correctly, so you want to make sure that those are going the correct direction. Or they'll put it on correctly um, so the numbers read correctly, but the binder clip doesn't sit correctly, and when they go to put it on and add a load, it'll fall out. So you want to make sure that it goes from the bottom up, Clip that onto the ruler at the zero, and then add in flipping on those, flipping up the little wings. So those attach on like so. Okay, and then we use a little eraser cap, which I don't have, <laughs> at the end here just to make sure that that's going to hold on tight. Okay, there it is. And that's again not part of the lever. These two pieces just help keep it where we want it on our desks. We also have the spring scale. Um, this measures effort. It measures effort in the unit of newtons. Newtons are read on this side of the spring scale. It also measures weight in grams, which is on the other side of the spring scale. So when you get your spring scale, you can look at how um, newtons and grams relate to one another. The very first thing that you want to do with a spring scale when you get it is make sure that it's zeroed. Um, for this particular kind of spring scale, there's a little metal bar up here you can pull on or you can push up. Right at the front of it, there's a little tiny metal bar that moves as you pull, and that little metal bar is what we read from when we um, read the spring scale. So you want to make sure that it's zeroed so that you're getting an accurate measure. Once that's zeroed, you can put it on to your lever arm. It can go on either side of the lever arm. For a first class lever, the big thing is that the fulcrum is in the middle. Um, effort and load can go on either side. So we attach it with the rubber band and that just allows us to get that spring scale onto our lever arm. It's really not a part of the lever. Um, it just allows us to make those measures. Okay, make sure you're holding on to it so it doesn't go flying up. And then this is our load. Um, for our purposes, it's just this small metal brick and it has a rubber band attached to it as well so that you can attach it on. It goes on the opposite side of the effort. And again, they could be on either side as long as they're on there. Um, when you attach that on, you want to take care and make sure you're hanging on to the lever arm. Notice I'm hanging on with my other hand. If not, it can slide down, fall off. It's a heavy little metal brick and it will hurt you. So once you have your effort placed on the lever arm in its position and your load placed on the lever arm in its position, you'll actually pull on the hook at the bottom and the silver bar will move on your spring scale and you can read how much effort it takes to lift the load given that particular configuration. So one of the things that you'll try out is moving the effort to different positions very close to the fulcrum and seeing how much effort it takes to lift the load and farther away from the fulcrum and seeing how much effort it takes to lift the load. You'll also practice with moving the effort really close to the fulcrum and seeing how much effort it takes to lift the load versus when the load is farther away from the fulcrum. So those are some interesting things you get to figure out as you do these laps. So again, we have the load, the effort, the spring scale measures that in the unit of Newtons, and then our lever arm and fulcrum. So I'm going to go over a couple of those vocabulary words for you. 
so that you'll understand better what those mean. I'll give you the definitions of them that you can look at. So the lever arm is just the beam or the stick that pivots. Okay, it pivots at the fulcrum. The fulcrum, that's the point where the lever arm does the pivoting. So those are just the main parts of the lever. And then the things that we put onto the lever are the load. That's the mass that's going to be moved. Okay, that was our black box that we're using. And the effort, which is the force that's needed to push or pull. Um, we use a spring scale to measure that. So spring scale, um, it just measures the effort, measures that in newtons. So one of the things that you can do is you can take your load and you can attach it to your spring scale to see exactly how much effort it would take to lift the load without using a lever arm. That, that'll let you know when you've got an advantage or not. Um, for this particular load, our load, it takes two and three tenths of a newton to just lift it straight away with no lever arm. So any time that we had it on this lever arm and it took less than two and three tenths newtons, we'd have an advantage. The lever arm would be helping us do the work. Anytime it took more than two and three tenths newtons, we'd have a disadvantage. The lever arm actually would be hindering us to do our work. Um, and there's one particular point at which it takes exactly two and three tenths newtons, so then we know how much that load would be. So when they're equal distances away from the fulcrum, that should be the case. So again, this is a first class lever. Um, I'm going to show you guys really quickly how to diagram a first class lever. Uh, it's a little easier than drawing out the entire thing. So this is a diagram of a first class lever. It's a diagram because notice that the fulcrum is in the middle. We always represent the fulcrum with a triangle and an F in the center of it. Um, the load and the effort can be on either side in a first class lever. Load is represented with a square with an L in it. And you'll notice this arrow coming off of it. That just shows the direction that the load will move. So the load on a first class lever always moves in the upward direction. The effort is a circle with an E in the center. And when we pull on the effort or apply effort, it's always in a downward direction on a first class lever. So that's a quick overview on your first class lever. You guys will be building one soon.